The Pacific Northwest ended up being a really good place for me to call my forever home because I am completely and totally obsessed with coffee. And you're going to find out just how obsessed I am in today's video. But before we get into that, hi, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are here for another round of 365 days of soap, and today we are making the espresso shot. Now, this is a soap that has been in my line since the very beginning, and I would not discontinue it even if it never sold another bar, but it definitely is always selling out, so that's not really a problem. This particular coffee soap is not only, you know, made to smell like coffee, it has coffee grounds in it, as well as a water substitution for, you know, coffee. The coffee that I'm using for this particular batch is from Cutters Point. They are a local coffee house here in Gig Harbor and they make the best dirty chai on the planet. Just go there and also order the 24 ounce because like no one else carries 24 ounce coffees and that's amazing. Anyway, the process of subbing in coffee for your water, it's a fairly simple process. You can do it in a number of ways. You can freeze the you can freeze the coffee into ice cubes beforehand, or you can just you know brew your coffee, let it cool down, and then use it in place of your distilled water. Today I chose the latter, and we're gonna show you, you know, what happens to a, a coffee soap when you do that. The biggest benefits of putting actual coffee, like liquid coffee, into a soap is going to be for that extra caffeine kick, which is a lot of fun. It's nice and skin plumping, and it really helps out with you know a number of moisture qualities. And then obviously the coffee grounds in, it drives the point home that it's a coffee bar, sure, but it also becomes a coffee scrub bar, and so you get the exfoliating bits. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about the espresso shop because it's making me really want coffee, and I have to be here. So we're gonna wait on the coffee thing after I finish the video. So let's go watch. I love coffee. I need coffee right now. I won't drink this coffee though because you know it's made for soap making and that's cool. We're gonna use it for soap. But you know in normal circumstances. I love coffee. So I had to make a coffee soap. I actually have two coffee soaps in the line and this is one of two. This is the espresso shot. Now I am subbing out 100% uh, of the water for coffee. And again, you can do that in multiple ways. You can go ahead and brew your coffee and then freeze it into ice cubes or you can do what I'm doing and brew it and let it cool down and then just use it in liquid form at room temperature to put your, your lye into. And either way works. I haven't found there to be any problem whatsoever with just using it here in its pure liquid form. So that is what I am doing. And I am mixing the lye into the coffee at this point and making sure that all of the lye granules get really, just get dissolved and do their thing. And there is a darkening effect that you can see there. And that's to be expected. Whenever you start enhancing your waters, you definitely run the risk of uh, them getting darker. But honestly, the coffee was going to make the water darker anyway, which is good for this design. You can play with the, uh, the dark and lye water in your design. Just, you know, keep in mind that you're not going to get a white coffee bar if you are going to include actual coffee in your lye water. Now, this is the stuff that we will be using to actually create the bar. So we have ground coffee that will go into this as well for the exfoliant, and then the color for the base of the bar, and as well as we have a very 
awesome caffeine kick with that scent with that espresso going on there. And then we do a decorative top on this as well with three colors. So white, the copper, and the cappuccino on top as well to, you know, give it some, some cool fun, some variety. And yeah, the coffee lye solution is going to go directly into the oils here. Now, this is going to be similar to uh, working with things like beer soaps and wine soaps and really any time that you enhance your waters, especially if you're enhancing your waters with something that has discolored your lye solution, finding trace can be a little bit tricky. Finding emulsification can be a little bit tricky when you are dealing with an off-color you know, solution right off the bat. Especially with this particular oil blend too, this is a 70-30 hard oils to liquid oils with this because it's a big like lots of lather blend going on and that is important for me because I really like these to have you know a really great bubble to them these coffee soaps especially since we're putting in the, uh, the, the actual exfoliant and exfoliants can be a lather inhibitor so lots of big bubbles is going into this with this actual oil selection and as a result since you have more hard oils to attain that it's going to be a tougher time to uh it's going to be harder to find trace and so with this it doesn't really matter i can mix this as long as i want because it doesn't need to stay super fluid because this is a very uncomplicated pour it's essentially one base color and then you have the three accent colors on top that just exist there so i can you know put a little swirl on top and decorate it now i'm going to pour off the soap batter into those three containers to do the decorative top and set those to the side and then get the rest of the, the soap you know, going. Now, using coffee in soaps, it's, I love putting coffee into soaps, not, and not just because it's like trendy and whatever. I love the antioxidants that come from coffee. It's great for the skin. I love the caffeine kick. It definitely gives your skin a nice you know, boost and tightening effect. And coffee soaps also help out with you know inflammation and sunburns and acne and that sort of thing. And so for that reason, incorporating coffee for all of those reasons, rather, incorporating coffee into a soap, it's a great idea. I I love it. The coffee bars are some of my favorite to use just because of all the benefits that come from coffee when it applied, you know, topically. And I, uh, with this particular recipe, because it does have the extra caffeine kick, because I am using the coffee itself instead of just, you know, making it smell like coffee or putting in just coffee grounds to have an exfoliant, it's, it's a really, it's a really winning bar. And this is something that I love using in the summertime because, you know, we're out and about and our delicate Pacific Northwest skin is getting burned quite easily and it definitely helps with the, the soothing of you know the, the sunburn and that's that's good we, we want to be soothed now that this is mixed up and you saw me mix the micas directly into the soap batter and I go either way with micas sometimes I will mix them with an oil and disperse them and other times I'll just put them directly into the soap batter itself micas are really lightweight and therefore very easily to, easy to incorporate into your your soaps that's not you know the same cannot be said for an oxide or an ultramarine definitely a, a heavier weight uh, colorant and so you will need to disperse that before you incorporate it or you could have pockets of the color just sort of hanging out in the bar and when water hits that portion of the bar it can you know stain your washcloth and you know whatever but with micas that's never the case really the worst thing that can ever happen with mica if you use too much of it is your lather goes gray and that's okay because you know maybe you just thought you were extra dirty that day it's really not okay I mean under you use your mic as accordingly but also again not going to stain a, a washcloth which is you know important now that is all mixed up and we are ready to pour it into the mold and let that set up before we do the top So again, it's ready to be poured into the mold and we're, we're going to do that thing now. We're just going to dump all of the coffee um, scents and scrubs and all of that jazz, all of the soap, the majority of the soap, into the mold and just set it to the side. And while that is firming up, 
I am going to get the other three beakers that I prepared, you know, at the beginning that I poured the soap off into ready for the top decoration. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I put all of the scent blend and all of the kaolin into um, these, into the bottom portion. And I did that because this coffee, it can discolor a lot and the scent can discolor a lot is what I mean by that. And so I don't really want these pieces to discolor and we're essentially left with nothing but a pure brown soap because I want a fun pretty top. So for that reason I don't put any of the scent into these three beakers and I also don't put you know the kaolin clay or anything into it either because this is all sort of decorative here and it's not you know super super needed. But another reason why I wanted to put all the kaolin into the main base is because I do want some glycerin rivers to sort of run throughout a dark bar because I do love, love the look of glycerin rivers in a dark bar and that therefore I wanted that extra water to exist inside the base and not in the top because I don't want glycerin rivers in like the decorative top at all. I want all of those lines to be just very crisp and bright and beautiful and leave it at that. Now for the three colors that I have you know selected for the top, I am just going to put them into the mold at sort of random places and layer each color next to each other until the entirety of the top of the soap is you know covered in these three these three colors and you can get super precise with putting your your lines down to do your decorative top i certainly used to and i don't anymore um this is something that i really used to obsess about and i wanted really equal lines for my my top decorative bits and it took like for a bar like this, especially like the this part right here already takes longer than pouring the majority than prepping and pouring the majority of the bar. And just imagine what it would be if I was just painstakingly trying to have perfect lines of, of color on you know down running the length of the mold there for all of the and perfectly evenly spaced and then you're actually having to get out your tape measure and make marks on the thing to determine what evenly spaced is. And so I just I eyeball it because once you take a skewer to it and you pull the design into it, you can't tell that they're not perfectly spaced. And so it all has a way of, uh, of working itself out. My mother actually helped me out with that a lot in the early stages because I really would obsess over the design and having things perfect. And you know, she, tell, she told me, she said, you know, the mind has a way of just filling in the gaps, right? So if you get something to a certain percentage of you know good the mind will fill in all of the rest of the places and go oh yeah no that's that, that's good that's it's achieved and that really resonated with me and and I decided to sort of make that kind of my mantra when I was dealing with soap decorative tops because I really would stress over that and I think one of the big points in you know making soap is it's supposed to be relaxing. It's to be the opposite of, of stressful. So I, I wasn't doing it right, essentially at that point, because it was, you know, a stressful situation. But at this point, it's all in the mold and it's ready to be skewered. And I'm just going to take my skewer just in the top, you know, quarter inch or so, and pull my skewer down the length of the mold um, a few times to pull those colors into each other and you know it's it's cool it's like you know like well like latte art right when you're when you get your your fancy latte at the at the coffee shop it's like that look how cute that is and that's you know why I want to do a, a top for a coffee soap like this because latte art now this is going to go into the oven and be sea popped because I sea pop all of my soaps and we will cut into this tomorrow and see the big reveal And by reveal, I don't really mean there's much to reveal. The only thing that we're really looking for with this is whether or not the glycerin rivers, you know, did their thing. And as far as this bar goes, it all looks great. It's a really well-formed bar. There are no you know, issues that, that stand out. It looks awesome. And I am excited to cut into it and see what kind of situation we have inside as far as the glycerin rivers. Because again, I did want those to show up 
in this bar just to add some sort of depth to the, the main base of the bar. Oh yes, and there they are. That totally exists. That's absolutely a thing. That worked. And the tops are beautiful. I really love this soap. And the smell is just so so potent. It's so lovely. This is a and this is one that actually holds its scent really, really well. So you don't need to use a ton and it still is a very it's you know it's it's a good, it's a potent bar. And you know, that's that's the coffee soap. And the cool benefits of these guys again, it's a uh, it's antioxidant, it's anti-inflammatory, lots of you know vitamin B and niacin and great bubble on these guys and yeah that's it that's a day 71 espresso shot one of my most favorite bars ever in the history of ever well there you have it the espresso shot this again is one of my best sellers in the line this is something that has been with me since the very beginning and i love to make it i love to use it i love the big bold smell of coffee like straight espresso there's no sugary notes or you know oat notes or milk notes or anything about it it's just straight in your face this will wake you up you know hit of caffeine and i adore that and obviously again one of the big benefits of putting coffee into your soap is you are going to get that cool caffeine kick you also get you know the coffee color coming through as well as the coffee smell and then you get the exfoliating nature with the coffee grounds themselves makes for a really excellent coffee scrub bar and something that i i love i like a good scrubby soap Anyway, that will do it for me today for 365 days of soap. Thank you so much for joining me for another round. If you're interested in the espresso shot, you can find that on the website at soapandplay.com. If you're interested in following me on social media, I'm there at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And if you are interested in more soapy antics, yeah, subscribe to the channel, do the thing, because we are doing this literally every day. And do that. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.